49 hours and 33 minutes later, welcome to Australia. For those wondering, we arrived to the city of Perth, home to 2.3 million people. It's also known as the most isolated city in the world, because nowhere else on the planet can you find a city of this size being so remote, because the closest settlement with more than 100,000 people is 2,700 kilometers away. Before we continue, I'm going to briefly explain you our plan for the following week. From Perth, we all head northeast to a town called Mount Magnet. From there, heading east to one of the most remote regions of the Australian outback. We are going to sleep a majority of time in our roof tent, multiple hundreds of kilometers from civilization, only one stopping in a small town called Laverton to refuel, before continuing for three days to Great Victoria Desert until we get back to civilization in Kalgoorlie, fourth largest town in Western Australia. Then, during the way back to Perth, we're planning to stop in a remote area in our tent for the last night, before arriving back to Perth one week later, riding more than 3000 kilometers. The next morning, we rented a modified Toyota Land Cruiser, a four-wheel drive car that's gonna allow us to get to all of these places, stop to get groceries for the following 7 days, 30 liters of water, and around noon, we were already on the road heading 600 kilometers to Mount Magnet, where the journey itself will really begin. Good morning from Mount Magnet! With a whopping population of 400 people, this is our last part of civilization before we head inside Western Australia to remote outbacks. We just fueled our car because there isn't any petrol station whatsoever. So now the real fun really begins. And we successfully arrived for the day. We are in the middle of Australian outback, the closest human people are maybe 100 kilometers away. And we found this beautiful spot in the middle of nowhere. I managed to set up the tent. It was definitely easier than to put it back. In its case, tomorrow morning it will be. But yeah, we're gonna get some food, watch the sunset, and maybe we'll even make a fire. After a surprisingly comfortable sleep in the tent, it was time to continue further into the Victoria Desert. Because the small roads got really sandy, one key tip here, to be able to drive through this rough terrain, it's absolutely necessary to lower down your tire pressure, because that will minimize the chances of you getting stuck somewhere. What really shocked me was when I raised my drone above the car to realize just how in the middle of nowhere we are. You see, I would really love to tell you something, but because of these flies, I simply cannot. It's just flies are flying into my nose, mouth, ears, this is better. It's funny that when you first get out of the car, there are just no flies, but after two to three minutes, maybe hundreds of them flying around me. But the situation is as follows. We are now heading into one of the most remote places we've ever been, the Great Victoria Desert. We are completely on our own for the next few days. Even 
even though we are in a desert, we still found this muddy section on this small road full of water. It's so slippery, I almost already fell down. Towards the evening, more and more clouds were covering the sky. But not thinking about it, we found a nice spot near a huge dried lake, built a tent and watched an incredible sunset, until... So we've just arrived to the place for the night where we plan to set up the tent and everything. I already built it, but then... It started raining and now there's a thunderstorm coming. Let's just hope that the things will get better. Lucky for us, after an hour of rain, the sky started to clear up and eventually the rain stopped. Of course, after this, it was very hard to start a fire, but a few attempts later, we could finally relax after the whole day just listening to the sound of fire. passing through an area called Plum Ridge Lakes and it's a series of several lakes discovered during an expedition in 1905 and even though now the lakes are dry it's still very beautiful because you can see a nice kind of pinkish clay layer and it just looks magnificent and another crazy thing is that right now we are the furthest we've ever been from any human civilization because closest people from here are 400 kilometers in every single direction. The small town Laverton from where we've started 400 kilometers away now and Kalgooli 400 kilometers away from here where we are heading next. So yeah, if anything happens here, we are totally on our own nobody's going to help us it's very strange and interesting feeling you really don't get to experience something like this on majority of our planet After two days of going alone through the outback, we finally met somebody. Hello, how many years have you been standing here? It seems like quite some time already, but I'm wondering why, why on earth would somebody come here with this kind of car? Soon after, we found a spot for tonight. As it was about to get dark, we watched the sunset before it got all cloudy and rainy as yesterday. Right, and now it's time to build the tent. that every evening in the great Victoria desert there's some rain. Rainy season it seems. Good morning, well not so good perhaps. 
It's been raining since 8 p.m. non-stop throughout the whole night and even now it's still kind of drizzling. It's making the experience here in Outback not so comfortable, but life is about unexpected situations. Because of that huge rain, the small road got really muddy and the hours of driving to Kalguli looked something like this. After a few hours of driving through this, we stopped for a while to get some rest. Oh sorry, wrong car. So we finally got to the main road to Kalguli, but this is unfortunately how it looks like. So on this we'll go for the next two or three hundred kilometers. Very, very nice. So after a few days in one of the most remote places in Australia, we are back in civilization. We got to the city of Kalgoorlie, which is the fourth largest town in Western Australia with a population of around 29,000 people. And one of the reasons it's famous is because of one of the largest mines in the world. I am right next to gold mine, the largest one in Australia and it stretches out three and a half kilometers wide and it's more than 600 meters deep. Each year they get to produce around 10 to 15 tons of gold and I've never seen something like this. This is just incredible. Our time in the outback was almost up and we soon had to get back to Perth. For our final night, we've decided to stop halfway to explore an unknown park called Exjardy. Watching the fire burn that evening, it felt as a kind of closure of the last seven days. We got to explore some of the most remote places in Australia, a hostile no man's land, but beautiful at the same time. If you would like to see more videos from the Australian trip, please like and subscribe because this is just the beginning. And if there is one thing I realized during my time in the outback that I would like you to think about goes like this. It's about the journey, not the destination.